when I see a number, I see a shape. It has a meaning. Every number is different and beautiful and poetic. And when you put them together, like in pi, it's just pure poetry. Estoy a punto de conocer a alguien extraordinario. Daniel Tamet es una de las pocas personas en el mundo con el síndrome del sabio, una variante poco común de autismo que muchos conocimos en su momento por la película Rayman. Daniel es como el personaje que interpretaba Dustin Hoffman, capaz de memorizar grandes cantidades de datos y de hacer cálculos mentales increíblemente rápido. Hello Daniel. Hello. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. you. Y lo que lo hace aún más excepcional es que, aunque es autista, ha aprendido a expresarse. Tanto que ahora es escritor. En sus libros cuenta, entre otras cosas, cómo ha sido capaz de memorizar más de 22.000 decimales del número pi. Pi es una historia, es un poema. Y como cualquier poema, tiene sus momentos de beauty, de color y de emoción. My mind sees numbers as uh, shapes and colors and textures, and like another language. Daniel también tiene síndrome de Asperger y sinestesia, un fenómeno neurológico que provoca una especie de interferencias entre los sentidos. Para él, cada número tiene un color, una forma y hasta emociones. So we talk about the number four, cuatro. When I see a number, I see a shape. It has a meaning. So if I see number four, shy. It means shy. So when I was a child and I saw myself as four, it meant I'm shy. But I would say in my head, I'm four. I'm the number four. And if I was sad, I would say to myself in my head, I'm the number six. So for example, six would be just, just like this. <laughs> Because six is like small, dark, cold, sad. The number five is loud. The number nine is big and uh, very imposing. Every number is different and beautiful and poetic in its own way. And when you put them together, like in pi, it's just pure poetry. So this is synesthesia. And, and why did you decide to memorize pi number? That's a good question. I think... Uh, I was at a key moment in my life. It was uh, 13 years ago now. I was uh, 25. And for a long time growing up, I had a lot of difficulty communicating. And Pi was the first uh, story that I told. Uh, it, but not in English, not in French, not in any other language, but in numbers. And, and how exactly did you do that? Oh, well... It's a very long number, of course. <laughs> um, I guess like a film. A film is a series of pictures, and when you put the pictures together, it makes a story. In the same way, I was able to see each of the pictures and put them together in, into a story. And I could see the story from beginning, middle, to, to the end. But it's incredible. Maybe for you. <laughs> for me, it's, it's normal, in a way. Because... Despite having a high function in autism, you're capable of expressing yourself. Yes. And this is a good chance for science because you can talk about the savant syndrome. Yes, exactly. What is most interesting for scientists, and I think for a lot of my readers as well, is the question of what is the mind? What is the human mind? What, what, what can it do? Like having a conversation, for example. What we're doing now is something that uh, took me many years to learn. So, for example, computers today are so strong. They can do amazing things. They can play chess better than anyone, any human. But when it comes to conversation, language, human language, they're terrible. And this is something that our brains can do easily. And have you ever thought about using your abilities to gambling or bet or anything like, like that? People have asked me, have asked me if, they, if I could give them the, the lottery numbers, for example. I wish I could. <laughs> It would be wonderful to have this ability. I don't. Or um, to play blackjack, for example. 
I think I would have good moral reasons for not wanting to bet. I, I think it's a waste of time. Daniel, you have prodigious skills, but what can't you do? In the past, we believed that when you, if you're born with a brain that's autistic or different, then you have the same brain all your life. Now we know that the brain changes all through your lifetime. So, for example, I, I found it very hard to, to make friends, to connect to people socially. Now I have lots of friends. I have friends. I, I, I know how to, I can <laughs> make friends. I fell in love. So I understand what it is to fall in love. Um, but I can't drive a car. I think it would not be a good idea for me to drive a car. <laughs> Why? I'm very uh, uh, patoso, and uh, it would be very, un very dangerous for the other <laughs> drivers. A Daniel le diagnosticaron autismo con altas capacidades cuando era pequeño. En la escuela hacía operaciones matemáticas inexplicablemente rápido y ni él mismo sabía cómo lo hacía. When I was growing up, I realized that I was different because everyone had friends easily, and I didn't. And I would use books to help me. I would read the dialogue in novels, and I would try to use the lines of dialogue in school with the children. And of course it didn't work because it's not the same situation. And I would make lots of mistakes and I would look stupid, but then I would learn. I would learn from my mistakes. You talk about happiness also in your, the books. You, you say everyone can learn to be happy. I think the biggest gift that anyone can give to somebody else to be a good and honest friend. And for me, this is pure happiness. Not to be a genius, not to be the best, or to be a friend and to have friends. Nice. You are very inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>